Here's the Yoro Rack version of the Mankato filter from STG Sound Labs. It's a great sounding low pass filter with various slope and pole outputs. There's a 6 dB slope, which will be a one pole low pass filter, 12 dB slope, which will be two pole, an 18 dB slope, which will be three pole, and a 24 dB slope, which is a four pole filter. There's also phase inverted outputs for all of those as well. We've got three signal inputs, which allows you to mix really simply on the module, and we've got three CV inputs that will track one volt per octave as well. The filter will self oscillate, and this works great as both an audio rate oscillator or as an LFO. So here's the Mankato, which is a low pass filter with various slope and pole outputs. This will self oscillate and act as an oscillator or an LFO. We've got three inputs, and I've got some noise and two saw waves tuned to octaves apart at these inputs. We've got the cutoff control and the resonance along with the frequency veneer which is a fine control for the cutoff or the oscillating frequency. We've then got three control inputs which all track one volt per octave and one of them's got an onboard attenuator. So let's have a listen to that filter. So there's a nice softer 6 dB slope, here's a 12 dB slope. Here's the 18 dB slope and you'll hear that that's a bit steeper. Finally, the 24 dB slope, which equates to a four pole filter. Leaving this cut off around halfway and skipping through the outputs, you can hear those different slopes. From the halfway point on that ring of outputs, these start to become mirrored outputs that are out of phase with their opposite outputs. So we've got the 6 dB and then an out of phase 6 dB, and so on as we work around. Carrying on with the filter, let's add some resonance. And as we're talking about the different outputs, notice the opposite ones sound exactly the same. So these two 6 dB outputs are the same, but as I said, 180 degrees out of phase of each other. Let's add some more resonance. Here's a 24 dB output. That frequency veneer for the filter can be used to fine tune that cutoff. It's more relevant when we've got this filter self oscillating later on. To make the sound of these slopes a little more obvious, let's add some modulation from an envelope and then I can skip through these outputs. So here's a 6 dB slope, and listen to the difference with that 24 dB slope. Makes that envelope response seem much tighter and deeper with that sharper top end roll off. Here's the 18 dB slope. And 6 dB again, which is much softer. And a 12. And just remember those opposites are out of phase of each other, but they will sound the same. So for now that's it for the filter, let's take the signals out and turn up the resonance so this starts to self oscillate. And we get a slightly imperfect sine wave from the 6 dB slope, it's got a slight harmonic content and a different colour so listen to that compared to the others. Which are nice sine waves and then we've got this slightly coloured sine on that 6 dB output. Control inputs for FM modulation. And that's something we're going to get to later in the video. Taking my output cable that's going to my sound card to a triangle output on an oscillator, I'm going to use the Mankato's output to actually move that oscillator as FM. will still self oscillate right down as an LFO and this is
is where the different phase outputs start to become more relevant and interesting, and again I'll get into that later in the video. So I've gone through the sound of the filter already, but let's look at a patch with that. So here's the sound that's coming in. A big rich mix of three detuned saw waves. I'm using the STG.BAM module, which is the leftmost module in the video. And I've got the red stackable going into the input, which is my pitch information from my sequencer. Then I've got the four blue stackables, which is taking the pitch, buffered perfectly out to three different oscillators and also into the filter for some key tracking. Pressing play on that sequence, I'm going to turn the filter up. And then let's add some resonance. Notice the resonance is just a static resonant peak around that cutoff, but as the control inputs track one volt per octave, I'm going to add that pitch signal to it and get the filter following my sequence. So you can hear it again, here's no key tracking. And then adding that back in. Let's add an envelope to the filter and I'll use a control input with a CV input attenuator. you can hear that's much softer. So I've got an accent pattern sequenced alongside the rest of the patch, so let's take the envelope CV out and add these accents to the filter. And you can hear these accents are just a high voltage that's going to push that filter right open. And we could attenuate this, but let's add that envelope back in and mix these envelopes and the key tracking alongside the accents. In this part of the video, I'm going to look at using the module as an oscillator. There's a slightly different tone on that 6 dB slope. Because this tracks 1 volt per octave, I'm going to start a sequence playing and have the filter play a pitch sequence. And you can hear this tracking, this swung arpeggio pattern. Adding some FM, I'm going to add an oscillator's output into the attenuated CV input. And the frequency veneer is much more useful as a fine tune control when this is oscillating. FM tones which run really well, here's some more FM signal. And these are particularly tones that you'd listen to wide open just ringing out, so I'm going to take this into a filter that's been controlled by an envelope just for some simple opening and closing of that sound. So I'll play around with this patch. fine tuning you can stumble across some great tones and we've got something very square like at the minute with these particular settings. I've got a stereo patch set up here so make sure you're listening in stereo with some headphones on or some decent speakers and you might need to set YouTube to a high quality playback in order to get the stereo sound. 
I've got two bandpass filters both taking the same pulse width modulated square from an oscillator and here's moving the right hand side's filters cut off. And then the left. And then both. And these are both just manual sweeps. I've got the Mankato self oscillating with a low cut off for an LFO range signal and I've got the two blue stackables taking the signal out to control each side of the filter. And as I've already mentioned these opposite outputs on this ring of outputs are out of phase of each other so plugging in the cables into these different outputs you'll hear that. And this is true for any of the outputs if we rotate around them. The complete opposites are always out of phase. If I go back to these both being on the same output and then move them round and you'll hear we're getting these different phases in the left and right sides. I'll keep moving these around. And the frequency veneer is really useful for fine tuning the LFO rate. We can of course still control this by CV and a negative signal lets us slow this LFO right down. Take my CV source, which is at the CV input, back up to zero volts. And then negative again. The positive signal will speed up this LFO's rate. So you can hear we're still in LFO mode and I'll look at some feedback patching. This works great when you're using it just as a filter and also when you're using it as an audio rate oscillating filter. But I'll stick to the LFO mode so you can hear what it's doing quite clearly. There's a sine wave output which is that shape of the LFO and the cutoff knob controls the rate. So this is all fairly simple like the previous part of the video but when we add one of those outputs back into the control inputs notice we get these changes in the LFO shape and the rate with different phase outputs we can create differences in the LFO shape as the phases of the outputs start to interact with each other. Going clockwise around the outputs, the attack of that LFO shape, if you think of it as a rise and a fall, shortens and we get a harder attack. And as we go the other way around, the rising portion of that LFO shape will stay the same, but we'll get a faster fall time.
So both sides of the output we're using give a different shape. And like any feedback in any patch, using whatever modules, processing your feedback externally and bringing that back in can result in some really interesting patches. So that's it for the Mankato filter, it sounds great as a standard low pass filter and it's great as a sine wave oscillator that you can FM, it also excels as an LFO where I've got those free CV inputs, key tracking and then great response from the feedback patching and all these different phase outputs that play along with each other nicely. Hit like and subscribe for more videos every week and check the Patreon link in the description to see how you can support my channel.